this video explains the applications of the bicycle theory of electrolytes. All right, so in the prior video, we have explained the concept of the mean uh, ionic activity coefficient. Okay, and we've come up with an expression that is like this. Uh, the mean ionic activity coefficient is simply the geometric mean of the activity coefficients of the positive and negative ions in your salt. Now, this equation is fine, uh, uh, but notice that uh, because we never know what these numbers are going to be, it's impossible to calculate what uh, the gamma plus minus is from that expression. Instead, uh, uh, we actually have to use a different theory, which was developed by uh, the Bayern Hickel. All right, so there's a couple of approximations that uh, the theory requires. One of them is that these salts have to be fully dissociated, right? So the degree of dissociation will be 100%. And the second thing is that this theory is only going to work out for um, uh, very dilute solutions. All right. So uh, how does the theory work? Uh, we're not going to de develop a theory, but essentially, uh, what the Bayern Hickel did is just consider that uh, when you have a positive ion in solution and then a negative ion in solution, you expect to actually have uh, some repulsions or uh, uh, between ions of like charge and attractions between ions of opposite charge, so like what you have right here. And that actually is going to mean that, uh, again, when you have a positive ion, it's going to be more likely to have a, a cloud of negative ions in the vicinity of this uh, positive ion than of positive ions, right? So, so this tends to stabilize those um, uh, uh, ions, and the, the, the opposite will happen for a negative ion, right? So for when you see this negative ion, then what will happen is that uh, you should observe a cloud, uh, an ionic atmosphere that is of counter charge uh, close to that ion. Right, so we actually know a little bit of how those two ions interact. This is just, uh, the interaction energy is simply Coulomb's law, uh, which we are familiar with. Okay, for pi, E naught, R, this will be how these two uh, ions attract in a vacuum. If you have a solution, which is what we have right here, you need to multiply this by uh, the dielectric constant of the medium, which is just a measure for how water molecules or other solvent molecules that are in between these ions are able to screen those attractions in this case. Anyway, so from these uh, considerations of uh, uh, the electrostatic attractions, uh, uh, of the ions and then uh, uh, the, the solvent, uh, the, the equation that the Bayern Hickel came up with is this one that you have used in other courses like analytical chemistry. All right, so um, the base, the logarithm of the uh, mean ionic activity coefficient is equal to minus 0 0.519 multiplied by uh, the absolute number of the product of the charges of the ions that you're interested in, okay, multiply by the square root of something that we call the ionic strength. Okay, uh, and the ionic strength is defined as one half uh, times the sum of uh, the charge of each of the ions, okay, squared, multiplied by the molality of each of the ions, okay, over the morality at uh, the standard state. All right, so the law is a little dry. Uh, two uh, things that we have to consider is that this is only valid for water. Okay, so this is, uh, the solvent has to be water, and then the temperature has to be 298 Kelvin or 25 Celsius. Okay, uh, if you have a different solvent or if you have a different temperature, then this constant that you have right here would get modified. Uh, all right, so, uh, Yes, not so that we uh, don't have to remember what is uh, constant, uh, how that changes for various solvents and various temperatures. We're going to constrain all of our calculations to water and to 198 Kelvin. All right, so um, yes, we're going to illustrate how this works um, um, by, for example, calculating uh, what would be the activity coefficient, the mean ionic activity coefficient for sodium chloride okay, in a solution that is quite dilute. Okay, 0 0.01. Uh, mole solution of sodium, sodium chloride. This is extremely dilute. In this solution, there's about 5,000 water molecules for each ion, uh, positive or negative, that you actually have in solution. Okay, so again, this is very dilute, and you're still going to see how, even though this is very dilute, uh, the activity coefficient is not one, which is what will happen if you uh, expect to find ideality. All right, so uh, the first thing that you have to do in order to be able to um, write uh, or calculate this um, mean ionic activity coefficient is right how the salt dissociates. Okay, dissociates to sodium plus 
and it's the Alinus in aqueous solution. Okay? So you have a 0.01 molar concentration in the salt, that means that you have 0.01 molar of sodium ions and 0.01 molar of chloride minus. Notice that these numbers will change according to the stoichiometric coefficients of each one of the ions. Okay? From uh, this uh, consideration, we can actually come here and then write what the ionic strength would be uh, in this particular case. Okay, the ionic strength is going to be equal to one half, and then the sum extended over all of the ions of the charges, mod squared, multiplied by the ratio of the molalities of the ions divided over the uh, reference molalities. All right, so uh, let's take first the first type of ion, which is sodium, the charge is plus one squared multiply by the molality of the ion, which is 0.01 molal over 1 molal. Okay? Division by this reference uh, molality yes, uh, uh, assures that the ionic strength does not have any units. Okay? Much as the uh, activity coefficient, the mean ionic activity coefficient, does not have any units. That is the contribution by the chloride ions, uh, sorry, by the sodium ions, and now we have to consider the contribution by the chloride ions, where the charge is just equal to minus 1 squared, and then you will have this is 0.01 molal divided over 1 molal. Okay, so from here you can calculate the ionic strength, which in this one, in this case, is going to be 0 0.01 uh, dimensionless. And then you would plug it here, that is going to be plus 1, minus 1, absolute value is just going to be equal to uh, 1, and then multiply that by minus 0 0.519, take the uh, anti based on logarithm. And then you find that for this solution, this number happens to be equal to 0 0.89. Okay, which is rather shocking, uh, because this number would need to be 1 for the solution to be ideal. So even in this, uh, at this dilute concentration, where again you have 5,000 water molecules for each sodium plus and chloride minus ion, okay, you actually have that that solution is actually not ideal. You have about 11% deviation uh, from ideal behavior. Okay. Uh, so again, that tells you that, that it's very difficult to get uh, a unique solutions that are very ideal. You actually have to uh, make this concentration be very, very small uh, before you actually start to get uh, adjectivity coefficients that are uh, much larger or, or very close to one. Okay, the way that this can get complicated is because uh, uh, in biological media, the life sciences, okay, we generally don't have solutions that are as easy as these where you just have uh, to the uh, salt dissolving into two, two different ions you might actually have that there's, there's other ions in solution in addition to this. Okay, so uh, the next illustration on the final illustration is going to be uh, to calculate the activity, activity coefficient for a 0 0.01 molal uh, uh, solution of sodium chloride in a solution that already has uh, also a 0 0.01 molal uh, solution of KBR. Okay? Uh, uh, which is another salt that fully dissociates. KBR is going to dissociate much as sodium chloride does, K plus plus Br minus in AQ solution. Okay, and if this is 0 0.01 molal, then this will also be 0 0.01 molal and 0 0.01 molal. Right, so we're still interested in calculating the uh, uh, activity coefficient of sodium chloride, not of uh, uh, potassium bromide, but of sodium chloride. Right, so we come to this expression, and here nothing changes, that's still uh, the charge of sodium chloride. The only thing that changes is the ionic strength. Okay? And uh, what that would mean is that uh, right here, when you extend the sum over all of the ions uh, present in solution, then you're going to have to consider not only sodium and chloride, but also potassium and bromide. Okay? So the way that this is going to uh, uh, work is by putting here the uh, contribution by potassium which will be exactly the same thing as sodium because in this case the molalities are the same and the charges are the same and then for bromide you will have exactly the same thing as chloride because the molalities are the same and the uh, charges are the same as well. Right, so let me see if I can write this here uh, small molal over one molal that would be potassium and then you will have uh, bromide minus one zero point zero one molal over uh, one molal I calculate what the ionic strength would be. In this case, that will uh, that will turn into 0 0.02. Okay, uh, uh, bring it right here, and then calculate the activity coefficient, and that is actually going to change from 0 0.89 to 0 0.85. Right. So the presence of extra additional ions in solution 
makes this dissolution mediate even more from ideality than when you only have uh, the salt. Okay? And again, uh, the reason you have these deviations is because there's these interactions between uh, ions of positive charge and ions of negative charge that tend to stabilize um, uh, the, uh, the ions. Right? And what that means is that uh, the effective concentration that you would have for sodium ions, right, uh, which is what, what we call the activity, is actually less okay, than the actual molar concentration that you have. Right? This is how uh, the activity is going to turn out to be. Notice that that number is less than 1, okay, meaning that uh, you're uh, uh, deviating from ideality. But uh, it also tells you that the effective concentration, right, the power that this ion has to elicit change in solution is actually less than the nominal concentration. And again, that's because those sodium ions are surrounded by chloride ions that stabilize that sodium ion. And it kind of, kind of that stabilization diminishes the ability to react or, or the ability to make any change at all. Okay? So there is the, uh, the divide Hick of 3 electrolytes uh, and a couple of applications uh, to common sorts.